नेक्स्ट प्लीज राइट ऑन प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ कन्वल्यूशन प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ कन्वल्यूशन टाइम शिफ्टिंग प्रॉपर्टी इज ऑलरेडी कवर्ड लेट एस स्टार्ट विथ टाइम स्केलिंग प्रॉपर्टी If x of t convert with h of t, if it is y of t, x of t convert with h of t, if it is y of t, x of a t convert with h of a t is dash. So if I am scaling both the functions with the same parameter of a, if I am scaling both the functions with the scaling parameter of a, then what should be the value of the output? It will be y of a t. But divided by mod of a. But divided by mod of a. So please let me know what is the correct answer from the given options. Yes, very good. Answer is the option C. Because here it is given that that z of t is equal to x of t convolved with y of t. From time scaling property, x of c t convolved with y of c t will be equal to z of c t divided by mod c. But c is a positive number, right? It is given that c is a positive real number. So when c is positive real number, then mod of c can be written as c. Mod of c can be written as c because c is a positive real number. so which implies that z of ct is equal to c into x of ct convolved with y of ct so which is nothing but the option c right so next one is the time reversal property time reversal property x of t convolved with h of t if it is y of t then x of minus t convolved with h of minus t is dash right so x of minus t convolved with h of minus t is yes y of minus t it is y of minus t commutative property commutative property x of t convolved with y of t, i mean x of t convolved with h of t is equal to y of t which is also equal to h of t convolved with x of t we have if we have to find y of t which is nothing but the convolution of x of a t convolved with h of t then we have to go with the direct method then your time scaling property is not going to help you the time scaling property will only help you when you have the same scaling parameter for both x and h terms right if x of t convolved with h of t is y of t then x of a t convolved with y of a t is going to be I mean x of a t convolved with h of a t is going to be equal to 1 by mod a of y of a t but if you are only scaling x of a t and not you are not scaling h of h of t then this particular formula is not going to be applicable so this is commutative property the next one is cascading property this is a very very important property it's a very important property that if you are having a system whose impulse response is h1 of t and if you are having another system whose impulse response is h2 of t then what is the overall impulse response what is the overall impulse response the overall impulse response is it h1 of t multiplied by h of h2 of t h2 of t i mean h1 of t plus h2 of t or h1 of t convolved with h2 of t so many students think that it is multiplication but it is not multiplication it is the convolution the overall impulse response the overall impulse response h of t 
is equal to H1 of T convolved with it of H2 of T. Convolved with it of H2 of T. So not even addition. Next is So cascading property, we are connected in series. So we can also call it as a series property. Now in the case of parallel connection, in the case of the parallel connection, let us say here we have H1 of T and here you have H2 of T. So when you are uh, Connecting them in parallel, considering the source for the missing. Then the overall impulse response H of T, the overall impulse response H of T will be equal to the top H1 of T plus H2 of T. The overall impulse response H of T will be equal to H1 of T plus H2 of T. Yes, very good. So here you are having two systems H1 of T and H2 of T are the impulse responses of them which are connected in cascade. What is the overall impulse response? So it should be the convolution of H1 of T and H2 of T. It's also quite simple question. Just let me know what is the answer. H1 of N and H2 of N are connected in cascade. The overall impulse response is dash. So we know overall impulse response is the convolution of the individual impulse responses. So del of N minus 1 convert with del of N minus 2. Del of n minus 1 convolved with del of n minus 2, it's del of n minus 3, isn't it? So the answer is option C. In the last question, you are given that del of n minus 1 is the impulse response of the first system. Del of n minus 2 is the impulse response of the second system. So the overall impulse response is what is asked in the question, right? The overall impulse response is nothing but the convolution of both of them. Del of n minus 1 convolved with del of n minus 2. It will be what? Del of n minus 1, del of n convolved with del of n, we have seen that it is del of n itself. So according to the time shifting property, del of n minus 1 convolved with del of n minus 2 is going to be del of n minus 1 minus 2. It's nothing but del of n minus 3. Right? So del of n minus 3 would be the correct answer. So another simple question based on the same topic. So you are given two systems which are connected in cascade, both are identical systems and their impulse responses are nothing but the rectangular pulses. Okay, so you are having two systems which are connected in cascade. The two systems which are connected in cascade and both are identical having the impulse response of, so this is the impulse response. If both the impulse responses are the same and we know because they are connected in cascade we have to convolve them, the result is what? Two rectangular pulses of equal duration are convolved, it will result in a, a triangular pulse. It will result in a triangular pulse with the width of the raising arm is equal to the width of the falling arm equal to one unit. This one unit is nothing but width of any rectangular pulse. The slope will be equal to the top of 1, product of amplitudes. So because the slope is 1, if you are moving by 1 unit, here you will have a, a value of 1 unit. So what is asked in this question is that, what is the maximum value attained by the impulse response of two cascaded blocks of G? Maximum value attained. The maximum value attained by the overall impulse response is nothing but the 1. The maximum value attained is nothing but the 1. Next question.
Yes, uh, so please note down the question which is present in this particular slide so that we can go to the next slide. Right, so uh, impulse responses H1 of T and H2 of T are given. H1 of T and H2 of T are given. So H1 of T is equal to 2 into del of T plus 2 minus 3 into del of T plus 1. H2 of T is equal to del of T minus 2. Right, so we know that the overall impulse response of the system Parallel connection. In the case of the parallel connection, the overall impulse response H of t is equal to 2 into del of t plus 2 minus 3 into del of t plus 1 plus del of t minus 2. This will be the overall impulse response. Now what is the input given? The input is u of t. The step function, right? So when u of t is converted with h of t, when u of t is converted with h of t, the result is nothing but y of t. And what would y of t be? What would y of t be? u of t converted with del of t plus 2 will be u of t plus 2. Right. See, when del of t plus 2 is converted with u of t, we know upon convolving with u of t, del of t plus 2 is going to be integrated. del of t plus 2 will be integrated or in the other way if u of t is converted with del of t plus 2 what will happen if any function is going to be converted with del of t it will be the same function now there is an advancing of two units it will be u of t plus 2 right so in that way u of t converted with del of t plus 2 will be u of t plus 2 minus 3 into u of t plus 1 plus u of t minus 2. Right. If you have got the same answer, from here you have to write the graphical representation. Let us write the graphical representation. At t is equal to minus 2. At t is equal to minus 2, the signal starts. The signal starts and has the amplitude of 2 units and it will go on, I'm sorry, and it will go on till 1 unit because this is u of t plus 1, right? It will go on till 1 unit and here you will be adding an amplitude of minus 3. So to already existing plus 2, you will be adding an amplitude of minus 3. Now it becomes minus 1. It becomes minus 1. And it will go on till 2. It will go on till 2. So this is what we call as y of t. This is what we call as y of t. Okay. So 2 units here. And from here it is minus 3 units coming down. And then you are adding a 1 unit at t equal to 2. Have you got the same relation? This is y of t. We have to find the energy of y of t. And you know the formula for energy. Energy is given by integral minus infinite infinity y square of t dt. Integral minus infinite infinity y square of t dt. So whenever you are having constant amplitudes, I told you a simple method. Whenever we are having constant amplitudes, we can directly square it. If you are squaring it, it becomes 4 units. 2 square is 4. Minus 1 square is 1. Now this is nothing but y square of t. Now you find the area of y square of t. You are having two rectangles. One rectangle having the breadth of one unit, length of four units. So four. Second rectangle having the breadth of three units, length of one unit. Three. So the answer will be seven joules. The answer would be seven joules. So 
first you will be finding the cascaded impulse response, the overall impulse response, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1. So it is 1 minus 2 and 1. Now, here we can see the length of the output sequence is 6 units, but the length of the impulse response is only 3 units. So L1 plus L2 minus 1 is equal to L. So L1 we don't know, this is 3 minus 1 is equal to 6. So L1 should be 4. So the L1 should be 4. So let me consider that x of n is having 4 samples a comma b comma c comma d. Now let me start a b c d 1 minus 2 1 and the last one is 0. So a b c d minus 2a minus 2b minus 2c minus 2d a b c d 0 0 0 0. So you have a sequence a minus 2a plus b a minus 2b plus c b minus 2c plus d c minus 2d d we can compare with the draw of y of n you can get the value of a is equal to 1 minus 2a plus b is equal to 2 so this b becomes 4 I have done a mistake here right so this will be 0 and here it is minus 1 okay so all zeros here minus a minus b minus c minus d and all zeros here okay so we'll be having the resultant A, B, C minus A, D minus C, I mean D minus B, minus C and minus D. So comparing, the value of A is 1, the value of B is 2, C minus A is 1, so C will be equal to 2 d minus b is minus 2 so d minus 2 it is minus 1 right right so therefore it is minus 1 so the value of d should be equal to 1 so the value of a is 1 b is 2 c is 2 and d is 1 of course the arrow comes here so the answer is option D. The arrow position of y of n is given at this particular point.